Luther the Fallen Son. So Luther the Fallen Son is a film adaptation based on the successful BBC hit Luther, which span across five seasons over the course of nearly ten years. And I do like Luther because I think its biggest contribution is, yes, it's like a murder series, but it's equally a very psychological one that focuses on not just Luther himself, but on the supporting characters as well and their motives. And there are a lot of character studies in this series as well, which adds a lot of value to how we develop characters in these kind of stories. But I think when the BBC decided to kind of make this into a film following the conclusion of the fifth series, why make a film when it's a completely different medium to television, especially given how successful Luther was. Why just continue it in this way? Because it's just going to be shorter, because the story is going to be a lot more compact within that time frame. But I think you could equally argue that every single case that John Luther has done throughout the series, they are like one whole film. In a lot of ways, like how Sherlock was a few years ago, which was a series that involved individual cases per episode, and they lasted for at least an hour to an hour and a half. But I think just how it was going to be done made me kind of question in my mind, mm, would this really work? Are they really milking it a bit much now? But that being said, I thought, you know what? Luther is a really good series and this was going to be a continuation of that series. I went in with an open mind. So Luther the Fallen Son follows brilliant but disgraced detective John Luther as he breaks out of prison to hunt down a sadistic serial killer who is terrorising London. So I said at the start that the series is very well known for its psychological depth and tension between the characters and I think that's what allowed us to really get to know John Luther and Alice Morgan and all the other characters in the series and I think when you are making a film that's just over two hours long there won't be enough room to elaborate on that and even though you could say that we've had five seasons of Luther that has given us enough time to get to know this character but because it's in a different medium this time it almost like had to go down a different route that made us feel somewhat different about the Luther we know in the series compared to what we get now in the film. And the film was following a structure that was very similar to a standard detective story because it is of a serial killer in London who is murdering people for very unusual motives. And it's up to Luther, who is in prison, to try and get out of that situation to try and defeat and catch this serial killer. And I think because so much actually happens in this story, not just the killings, but also what happens to Luther himself. If this was a series, I think this whole film could have actually been one, two, or even three episodes in an entire series. That's what I do applaud this film for, because it does, you know, summarise everything within the story rather than stretch it out, which has been a few criticisms of mine about TV shows over the years. But I do think the impression of that is that Luther the Fallen Son's story doesn't really kind of follow a structure that is kind of different than anything we've already seen before. And one thing I did actually compare it to in many ways is the Batman. And even though I know people might be watching this video and thinking, yeah, it's a bit too far-fetched. Why are you thinking Batman? What, you know, what are you thinking there? I think for me, it's the psychological tension between the hero and the villain in this film, like we got between Batman and the Riddler. And it's good because we see the hero as vulnerable, who does have flaws, who does have weaknesses. And the villain was almost getting the upper hand on him. And that's what I did like about the psychology behind the story of this film. But that being said, I think where the film did fall short in terms of the story is that it was building up to something very intriguing. And I think the final climax, it just kind of got a bit goofy. And I just felt, oh, OK, you know, that it just didn't really build up to anything where I was like, oh, my God, I wasn't shocked. I wasn't surprised. And I wasn't really kind of feeling there was any kind of jeopardy or danger like there would have potentially been in the build up to those events. And maybe that's because I'm a bit desensitised to things like this now because I've seen that many horrors and thrillers and murder mystery stories over the years. But I think because the story focuses so much psychologically on the characters that the climax could have equally done that. But I just felt it just didn't for me. But despite that though, the production values are actually really good. And I think when you watch this film, you'll know how similar in terms of the action sequences and just where a lot of the film was shot reminded you very much of the Daniel Craig James Bond films because we saw a chase sequence in the London Underground. 
we saw the climax happening in the snow. But the production values were really good. I really liked the action sequences. The cinematography was really good. And I think it was actually a, a decent film in terms of how it was made. And in terms of the acting, I've always found Idris Elba to be one of the most underrated actors. And again, he absolutely nailed it in the role of John Luther. He was equally as good in this film as he was in the series. Because what I like about Elba's portrayal of this character is that he brings a very gritty presence to the character, while also showing vulnerabilities that the character depicts. And also signs of intelligence as well when approaching these cases and solving them. And again, I really liked Idris Elba as John Luther in this film. And whether he'll come back or not, I'm not entirely sure. And we also saw Oscar nominee Cynthia Erivo in the role of DCI Adet Rain, who is like Luther's equal to a certain degree. She's a new character who wasn't in the series, and she's someone who is almost battling within her own emotions as well, because she's trying to do the right thing by her job, by, you know, what's morally right for her. But equally, she's kind of feeling a bit out of her depth to a certain degree because she's trying to catch this serial killer, and the only person who can do it is John Luther, who's in prison. So she's kind of battling with her own psychological demons too. And I thought generally her performance was very good. Now we had Idris Elba as the title hero and in the role of the villain, we had British actor Andy Serkis. And we know he's so good at playing bad guys, but he's even better when he plays a creepy bad guy because he showed us a very you know approachable presence about him but in reality he's an absolute nut job and i go back to what i said earlier about the fact that this film reminded me a lot of the batman i think andy circus's character was like the riddler too which ironically is a film that starred andy circus because with very little character context in the beginning of the film we just knew that this was a guy who deliberately antagonised the heroes and just left clues as to why he was doing what he was doing. So even though Andy Serkis is, in my opinion, one of the best actors of this generation, he gave such a creepy performance in this film. He almost kind of made you feel squeamish just watching him. And that's credit to his performance. And that's what he was trying to achieve with this character. And that's exactly what he did. So overall, Luther the Fallen Son is a film that didn't necessarily have to be made. But... I'm glad it was. And there will be people talking about this film as if it is Idris Elba's audition for the role of James Bond. But Luther is a character in his own right and he does bring something unique to the standard British crime dramas that we've seen over the years. And this is a film that is an elaboration of that. I just think now because of the success of the series and the fact that we've had this film as well, that I think they just need to let it go and just leave it now. What did you think of Luther the Fallen Son? Did you actually enjoy it compared to the series, or did you think it was a massive disappointment? Let me know in the comments below, and as always, if you did want to enjoy this video, then please hit the like button and subscribe for more, and have a notification bell ticked so you're notified when I upload a new video, and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care, everybody.